In the future, AI ravages the world, becoming so sophisticated it will actually bomb the human beings, leaving us to fend for ourselves, scrambling to decide what to do about our own creation that's run amok. That's my theory on what's gonna happen in the real world. It's also the plot of the movie The Creator, and about a hundred other sci-fi films, but this is the one we're reviewing today. Let's begin. Rogue One director Gareth Edwards is back, and this time he's brought with him all the explosions, all the action, all the sci-fi CG robots you could imagine. What a treat. What a gift. And how dare you for not seeing it, is what I would say if you didn't go out and watch this film. But you did. We're supporting it. We're having a good time watching it. And I hope they make more. Because as it stands, The Creator is a solid film. Like all movies, it has its problems, sure. Do I think it gets a little dumb in the final act? Of course. Does the plot go a little haywire? Sure it does, but it's sci-fi, it's action. Well, we'll move past it. And at just over two hours, I felt like maybe two more minutes could have been added on to the ending to make it feel not so abrupt. This is spoiler free though, I'm not gonna give away the game. I want you to go out and watch it yourself if you didn't, because let's be honest, even in 2023, with our modern advancements in the real world, Huge TVs at home, 4K, OLED, 8K, projection screens that can take up the side of an entire wall. Insane home theater equipment such as surround sound, haptic feedback chairs, and the comfort of a pause button in case you need to go up and use the bathroom. This all pales to the theatrical experience where you can go in, plop down $15 of your hard-earned cash, purchase a $35 soda and popcorn combo, head into the theater with a bunch of fellow movie fans who are there to not waste your time in theirs and sit on their phone for the majority of the film. No, they're there to be engrossed in the film, be blown away, be captivated by the sounds and the photorealistic graphics that our director and his team have crafted. That's what a fucking idiot would say. No, in 2023, the theater experience is wildly different than it ever was before. But let's take this rant, let's just set it over there for now. We'll just, we'll get back to it later, we'll address it later. I wanna talk about the creator a little bit more. I do think it's worth watching, I think it is worth putting down your cash to go see. I don't say that often anymore. Because there are a good chunk of movies now that I don't think you need to go see in theaters that you won't be missing much if you wait till they're streaming. If you really liked Rogue One, yet you can't remember the names of any of the characters and they didn't have much of a personality outside of one wears goggles, one is blind, so on and so forth, you might find familiar company with the creator. Now I, I thought this was better. I actually did have a connection to some of the characters in this. I found Elfie, the little girl, to be very lovable, very likable, she's a little kid. So obviously that's already gonna have some sort of heartstring pulling moments for me. I thought John David Washington as Joshua was a very likable lead protagonist. However, the whole I hate robots shtick is a little bit played out in sci-fi. I don't need a begrudging hero that's like, eh, I'd kill every one of you if I had the opportunity, but my mission says this. I, I've seen enough of that. Thankfully, for Joshua's sake, it doesn't last too long. As I said, the visuals are very impressive. They're lifelike most of the time. There's some very slick robot designs. I like that there's a varied amount of them. It feels almost like you're in a Star Wars Rogue One again, but it's mixed in with shades of Blade Runner. And over here, you have a little bit of District 9. There's a grittiness to it, but it's all still very polished. There's a decent amount of action and explosions. It's not like John Wick though, or The Matrix. It's just solid. It's very well crafted, but it's nothing like, oh man, that scene in particular was amazing. That hallway fight, that hallway shootout. It's always a hallway. It's obviously really pulling in the drama department. I think it kind of gets there, but again, we needed a little bit more. It's not often I say that we need a little bit more, but we did. The time felt a little rushed in the last act. Let's talk music, let's talk score. It's there, it's present, it's really working for this film. It's pulling you in, it's sucking you into the environments, which are beautiful and varied. You're going all over the place. The boiled down plot is this. I know we're taking a long time to get to this piece, but, <laughs> but what has happened is America hates AI and they have outlawed it because there was a bad explosion that took place, killed millions of people a long time ago. And so they're at war trying to find and kill any AI remaining who have taken shelter in New Asia. During the hunt, they find out there's a secret weapon that the AI have been working on. Joshua's gonna come into contact with it. Spoiler, 
it's a little girl. This this is this is made well known in the trailer. So this is on you if you were trying to go in 100% fresh. Why are you watching reviews on YouTube by jackasses? Go out and watch the movie first. Joshua and Elfie have a great chemistry together. We're, we're with them a good amount of time. Think the road, think the last of us, think Logan. It's your traditional video game escort mission. Get from point A to point B to point Z. And the movie does work. It worked for me for the most part. I wanna see this expanded. I wanna see more of these films, maybe not a sequel, Maybe just more by Gareth Edwards, and I think we're gonna get that. Hopefully this movie's doing well, it's performing well at the box office, and we can see him take his vision in different directions. Not everything needs to be a franchise, not everything has to have a bunch of sequels, but if they are gonna get some, I think this is the guy that could get it done the right way. This could be his new Star Wars, right? We, we, Disney tried their game, they tried their hand over there, not going great. Maybe we go a different direction with a different visionary director. Or we just wait a couple more years and AI can be that for us. Wouldn't that be grand? Wouldn't that be not at all depressing? Anyway, those are my thoughts on the creator. Let me know in the comments if you saw it or if you're planning on going to see it now. I would, I would like to hear from you. Please like the video if you, you know, like the video a little bit. That way I would appreciate that. Subscribe so that the algorithm and the evil ghost in the machine can say, people like this content. Let's feed them more of it. Otherwise, they just completely erase me from the internet, and that would be a sad state of affairs for me. But until that time, I'm here. I'm making movie content. Would love to have you stick around. And hopefully, I see you next time. Okay, those are my thoughts on the creator. Now let's briefly talk about the magical experience I had at the movie theater I was at. The Regal. I like to go to an early movie showtime if possible on a Thursday to avoid a bunch of people. I want it to be me in the movie. I want to get the full experience. And I guess I got the full experience of 2023 going to the cinema because a couple other people were there, including a gentleman that decided, you know what? Let's sit four seats over in the same row as this guy over here. Even though the whole theater is open and at my fingertips, I'm going to sit in the same row as this guy, just a couple seats down. So I can kind of reach out and touch him if I want, or better yet, pull out my phone and sit on it every five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> This instantly ruins some of my enjoyment of the film because there's a small part of me that's just waiting for this dipshit to bring up the phone. And even though his brightness was low, I give him credit for that, I still see it flicker on. It still pops up. And so part of me, 10%, 5%, maybe higher, maybe lower. It depends on where we're at in the movie. It depends on where we're at in my mind state is waiting for him to bring that fucking phone up again. And as the movie goes on, I just start raging. Typically what I do is I'll move seats, but my seat was warm from the touch. I had my drink there. I was in a good, beautiful spot in the theater. I was pretty far back, but I was in the middle. I could have moved up, but it shouldn't be on me. It shouldn't be on me to have to move when this guy's being a douchebag. He can go to the back. He can Rosa Parks this situation and sit on his phone for all the live long day. I shouldn't have to do a goddamn thing! I kept glancing at him. I kept doing full body turns towards him. He's not getting the hint. He's in his own world. Checking Facebook, checking Instagram, checking Tinder or Grindr, whatever the fuck he's into. You're not special, dude. Nobody cares about you. You know, I consider myself to be a nice person. I, I try, I genuinely try to be a good person. I try to respect people, their boundaries, and just kind of not be a dick. But it's getting really hard to watch people not care at all about what others think about them, how they're presenting themselves in public. This is opening afternoon. Why are you here, dude? Here's the part that really chaps my ass. After the movie's done, he has the cojones to go out, stand by the entrance, and start chatting it up with other like-minded moviegoers, saying how he thought the movie was great, and blah, 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 blah. Fuck you, dude! No! No! So now it's up to me. Now it's up to me to set the new standard. Now it's up to me to send a message. <laughs> it's funny that we were at the creator because I was about to end this man's fucking life. I mentioned in the review that this is the director of Rogue One. Um, I went full-blown Darth Vader on this guy. The movie's starting to wind down. He looks over and sees this shadowy figure ominously staring at him 
through his mind into his soul. He tries to get up and run, but that's not happening. I force pull his ass towards me. Vroom. Skent and then skent and then skent and then. I know that's not the song from that film, but that's still my favorite. Duel of Fates. Come on, it's a banger. I bust out a saber. Cut him right across the breastplate. Doesn't kill him. No, 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 no. I make sure it only wounds. It only maims. Skent it. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it. It's at this point I do a flurry of cool combat moves with my fictitious saber. After beating him within an inch of his life, he starts crawling across the ground over the sticky popcorn. It's on his hands. He's going across the chairs, and I'm just pecking at him with the saber. He's throwing up blood on the seat in front of him. I take an elbow to the back of the neck. Pull back the hair, and with that crossbow right above the hilt, I slice across the throat. But then using some cool ass Jedi rewind time shit, I force pull the blood back into his throat and seal up the wound. And then I do it again. I do this for an hour and a half to really get the point across. Literally. <laughs> Remember when literally was used properly for comedy? He snails his ass into the entrance of the theater. I'm slowly walking behind him like a baller. Don't even try it, dude. I have the sword at my side and I finally boom, 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 do a couple cash spins. Whoosh, right into the back of his spinal cord. He shakingly holds up his hand, at which point I pull his phone into my grasp, take a peek, look down at him and say, oh, look. No one cares. And then he dies. Like a goddamn bitch. The creator was good, though.